Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started today, if you are a Star Wars fan, I want to see more of my videos and get notified about when they come out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell, which is right there beside it. Um, and frankly, why wouldn't you? Because that would be like Luke Skywalker not needing to go to Takashi Station to pick up those power converters, which we need to happen Star Wars needs it to happen, so I mean, I mean, why wouldn't you anyway? But let's let's get stuck into today's video, which is talking about eight interesting facts about Jango Fett. How you doing, you old pirate? So good to see. You. In the final years of the Republic, Jango Fett was regarded as the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. A proficient marksman and unarmed combatant, Fett was covered in a sleek armor suit. That concealed his scarred face. The father of Boba Fett, a genetic clone of his, whom he raised as a son. Fett was adopted by the Mandalorian warriors following the murder of his parents and the disappearance of his older sister Arla in 58 BBY. Number 8. His Backstory Jango grew up in the Mandalore sector during the Mandalorian Civil War. During the conflict, his parents were murdered by the Death Watch. Jango was taken in and raised by the Death Watch's rival faction, the True Mandalorians. The leader of this movement, Jaster Morel, was his adoptive father. During a battle years later against the Death Watch, Morel was betrayed and left for dead by his second in command. As the new leader of the True Mandalorians, Jango had to battle the Jedi who sided with the Death Watch in the conflict. Jango Fett killed six Jedi with his bare hands but was the only true Mandalorian to survive. Count Dooku heard of Jango's impressive tally against the Jedi and thought he would make an excellent genetic template for the clone army. While on Kamino serving as the template for the clone troopers, Jango Fett supervised the training of the troopers. He trained them through the Mandalorian methods and helped design their armor. He recruited an elite group of 100 training commanders, most of which were Mandalorian, to train the army's special forces. He personally oversaw the training of the most elite group of clone troopers. Jango Fett confronted Mace Windu when the Jedi lost his lightsaber running from a reek, a large animal in the arena of Geonosis. But Jango lost the upper hand when the reek turned upon him and trampled on him. He managed to kill the reek but was immediately set upon by Mace Windu who quickly decapitated him. Right before Windu's fatal swing, Jango tried to activate his jetpack but it didn't fire. When the Reek trampled Jango, sparks flew out of his jetpack indicating it was damaged. As the clone army was put into use, the army suffered from losing its template. In the Clone Wars episode, Clone Cadets, Lama Su and the clone's drill instructors discuss bad batches of clones when five trippers appear to be having trouble completing their training. Some clones are not accepted into the army and instead become maintenance clones after failing their training. Lama Su explains that since the death of Jango Fett, they have had to stretch his DNA to produce clones. This led to some batches of clones that seemed to be defective for the army. After Jango's defeat on Geonosis, Baba swore revenge against Mace Windu. During the Clone Wars, Baba Fett finally got his chance to execute a revenge plot. Assuming the identity of a clone tripper cadet, Boba Fett infiltrated a Republic vessel. He set a bomb in Jango Fett's helmet and left it where Mace Windu would find it. When this failed, Boba's fellow bounty hunters set a trap for Windu by taking hostages. In this violent hostage situation, Boba realized his mistake in allying with these bounty hunters. Baba eventually decided to betray his former allies and save the hostages, but swore to never forgive Mace Windu. In the Star Wars comic, Age of Republic, Jango Fett, we get to see what Jango thinks of the clone army that is cloned from his DNA. 
In a conversation between Django and a Kaminoan, the Kaminoan was ecstatic as not one single unit fell below the combat parameters, stating that Django must be proud of this creation. He replied in typical Django fashion, short and direct, by saying, what should he be proud of? Livestock bred as cannon fodder? To die for something these soldiers didn't believe in or even know what it is? No, he was not proud or interested in them. These were their creation, not his. His ship was a modified Fire Spray 31. There was only maybe five or six of them in the galaxy being used as prisoner transport ships. During a prison riot, Django stole one of these and renamed it Slave One. After his death in the Battle of Geonosis, Boba Fett inherited it. After Django Fett's impressive fight with Obi-Wan Kenobi on Kamino, Django makes one small mistake during his exit. As he runs aboard his ship, Slave One, he bangs his head on the closing metal door as it lowers down to him, complete with a metal hitting metal sound effect. This is a small moment with a small reference to a goof in A New Hope where a stormtrooper bangs his head on a doorway. If you like what you saw here today and can't wait for my next video to drop, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Star Wars Oosh, the same name as this YouTube channel. Um, also, let me know if you want any characters to be covered by one of these videos. You can let me know in the comments section below. That's all from me. So as always, folks, take care and may the force be with you. Do what must be done. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy.